Well, welcome to Christian Answers. This is Pastor Jeff Short, and today we're going to be looking at a Time magazine article that talks about a ethical and moral situation that involves Hollywood actress Gabrielle Union and former pro basketball star Dwayne Wade. They are married, and they are trying to have children, and what they've decided to do is to have a surrogacy pregnancy. And what that means is they have a child because that Gabriel uh, Union cannot bear a child for physical reasons. They're going to have a surrogate mother deliver the child. So Dwayne Wade is going to have a child through another woman. And Gabriel Union talks about that in her Time Magazine article that we're going to be reading here. So it brings up a lot of different issues, especially for Christians. Um, you know, how free are we to experiment scientifically and technologically with childbearing? Uh, the in, in vitro fertilization route has been very controversial because it involves the producing of fertilized eggs and not just one but a number of fertilized eggs and then what happens is that one of these eggs is chosen and it is implanted in the mother and if all goes well that implantation will develop normally and naturally into a child the question though is what happens to the fertilized eggs conceived children that's what a fertilized egg is a conception what happens to them quite often they're just simply kept frozen in storage so you're basically keeping conceived children in storage frozen and is that ethical is that moral well from a Christian standpoint that is really really a problem and so we're going to read through some of this article and talk about what is happening here with uh, Dwayne Wade and his wife, uh, Gabrielle Union. And quite an interesting article, to say the least. Uh, it says, in 2016, my doctor, Kelly Bake, a no-nonsense reproductive endocrinologist in L.A., gave it to me straight. Your best chance for having a healthy baby would be surrogacy. Now, the first time I've ever heard of surrogacy, really, uh, in practical terms, I have never really done any study on this, but I was. it was a couple years ago when Kanye West and his then wife, Kim Kardashian, were talking about that they were having a child. And I thought, okay, they're having another child. But as it turned out, I read further in the article, they are having a surrogacy baby. So, evidently, uh, Kim Kardashian, for a number of different reasons, has decided that she's not interested in having a child or can't have a child or it would be risky to have a child uh, through natural childbirth. And so what she's going to do, her and Kanye are going to hire a surrogate to have a child for them. And so Kanye West is going to, uh, through some kind of a in, in vitro fertilization, going to uh, impregnate another woman. And then this woman gives birth to Kim Kardashian and Kanye West child. And they pay her money. And they're basically essentially using her womb to give them a child. And so I ran into that and I thought, wait a minute, what, what is this? Now, this is after Kanye made a big splash about being a born-again Christian, and now he's living his life for Christ, and he wants to do everything according to the Bible, and so on and so forth. And he cr comes out with a book, uh, a record, excuse me, he comes out with a record with Christian music in it. So this raises the question, is he continuing on in his worldly uh, pagan ways, only just saying, okay, now I'm a Christian, because... Uh, I didn't sense that there was any 
grappling with the ethical and moral dimension of this. They just said, oh, well, let's just have a surrogacy. That's that's the easy way to do it. So they found a woman who was willing to basically rent her womb. That's what you might call it, a rent a womb and give birth to this child through Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. So I thought that is very strange. I'm going to have to do some more research on that. Well, here again, you have another couple. This time it's a Hollywood actress and a former NBA superstar. And they have been trying to have children. And here's that's part of the story here in the Time Magazine article. So let me read that and uh, we'll talk about it. Uh, she goes on, I had been through an endomyosis diagnosis and more miscarriages than I could confidently count. So she's gone through these miscarriages. That has got to be very discouraging for a woman uh, to have to go through uh, miscarriages when she's trying to get pregnant. And all that I could do was nod. I was not ready for to do that. I wanted to experience being pregnant, to watch my body expand and shift to accommodate this miracle inside. I also wanted to experience of being publicly pregnant. I would shake off the distrust society has for women who, for whatever reason, by choice or by nature, do not have babies. I had paid the cost of that for years and I wanted something for it. So she not only wanted to uh, carry a child, but she wanted to do so out in the public and so she could feel like a mother because that's what mothers do. That's how, that's part of the pregnancy is that people talk to you about the pregnancy and other women share their experiences and that whole situation. And she wanted to go through that. I had held out for a year after Dr. Beck suggested surrogacy, instead chose to endure more IVF cycles and losses. So what happens with IVS, uh, like I described before, is that the male sperm and the female's egg uh, are impregnated and uh, they conceive and then some of the one of the eggs is implanted and hopefully it produces a natural pregnancy. But in her case, in Gabrielle Yunzen's case, it does not produce pregnancy. So the IVF procedures that they have tried over and over again have not resulted in pregnancy. So that's very discouraging. Everyone comes to the decision differently. Near the end of that year, that hopeful and hopeless year, I had a new plan to take Lupron, which basically quiets the adenomyosis. Dr. Beck told me I would have a 30% chance of bringing a baby to term. But the side effects of Lupron can be intense. You're basically throwing your body into early menopause and you can break bones very easily. It was something my husband said that changed my mind. I told him I wanted to try the drug. Dwayne was quiet and then said, you've done enough. There was a desperation dripping off him that I couldn't ignore, a desperation of wanting things to be right with us. And there they are. There's a picture of them. And so then it goes on. In 2013, before we married, Dwayne had a baby with another woman and should go and should go without saying that we were not in a good place at that time that child was conceived. But we were doing much better when he finally told me about the pregnancy. To say I was devastated is a pick, to pick a word on a low shelf for convenience. There are people, strangers I have never met, who have been upset that I have not previously talked about that trauma. I have not had words, and even after untold amounts of therapy, I am not sure I have them now. So it looks like before they were married, uh, they were probably dating or whatever. Uh, Dwayne Wade had cheated on her, said Dwayne had a baby with another woman before they were married, but probably before they were, they, after they were dating. It doesn't say all of these details, but I'm just putting two and two together. Okay, so that uh, 
had really challenged their relationship, as you can see. Someone like Dwayne Wade cheating on his girlfriend, soon to be wife. And then he says, uh, you've done enough. He said, I looked at Dee with an instantaneous white hot rage. I was fighting with my husband about what was best for my body. Do he, did he really think that surrogacy and a baby was our chance to set it right, to rebalance? I said, coolly, you're going to be the reason, voice of reason now, really? Okay, so they're having a little spat, spat there. He looked me in the eye as much as we want this baby, I want you. He said slowly, we lost too much in our relationship for me to be okay with encouraging you to do one more thing to your body and your soul. All right. I read those words now and hear them again. I didn't receive this as concern at the time. It sounded like an acknowledgement of failure because at that point I would have sold my soul to get out of the endless cycle of loss. What was the going rate for souls? What was mine worth? Anyway, the experience Dwayne have experience of Dwayne having a baby so easily while I was unable to left my soul not just broken into pieces but shattered into fine dust shat scatterings in the wind we gathered what we could to slowly remake me into something new there was no way to disguise where i'd been glued back together okay so they're having a, t a rough time uh coming to agreement on this and she didn't want to uh go to that route but it looks like uh, Eventually, she does. Clearly, my feelings weren't originating from, from a healthy place. So much of what made the decision so difficult was that it didn't submit to a sur if, that if I didn't submit to a surrogacy, then I was convinced I needed to let Dwayne go, even if he want, didn't want me to. I had to let him find someone who could give him what he wanted. So at that point, okay, they're married, and she's talking about, well, if I can't have a child, I'm going to have to uh, tell him that, uh, why don't you go ahead and divorce me? Uh, which is not the way a marriage works. Uh, you don't, for better or for worse, for rich or for poor, till death to us part. A Christian marriage, you don't say, oh, well, you can't produce children for me, so I divorce you. No, that's not a Christian marriage. So, um, you can clearly see here that they're not operating under a Christian worldview because you're not thinking, you don't think like that. You don't think, oh, if I can't produce, if the woman cannot produce um, a baby, a child, then the husband should divorce her because she can't give him what he wants, which is children. Well, that's not a Christian response. That's not a biblical response. Uh, Christian worldview. But I loved him. Each day he had worked to be forgiven and I had chosen to do so. And part of this journey of making peace with our love is making peace with ourselves. I had come to accept that without that awful collusion, collision in our lives, this big bang moment in our relationship that set our galaxy as we knew it, it wouldn't have, have become the individuals we wanted to be. The me of today would not have stayed with him. But would I be be who I am now without that pain? I remember a small voice in my heart telling myself to leave, but my fear of public humiliation was so great that I didn't take my own advice. So she stuck with her husband, not her husband, her boyfriend, Dwayne Waite, before they were married, and they went on ahead. In aftermath, I invested so much time in making peace between us that I gave myself absolutely no self-care. Oh, okay. And now there I was, still putting my life second to some shared mission. Why was I so willing to risk myself for a chance? If there was another way for me to bring my baby into the world and have my health, why was it so hard for me to make peace with that? So she's processing this in a typical kind of a Hollywood uh, self-obsession way. And we see that here. Uh, so it says, for weeks I went down a rabbit hole of books, surrogacy, message boards, conversations with our fertility agency. At the top of the surrogate fruit chain were married white American women who have their own kids. The belief is that if they are married, they have a built-in support system. And if they have more than one child, there's proof that they can do the job. On the message boards, 
people can be anonymous, so they rank surrogates by race. I got the sense of a lot of white families to be were more comfortable with brown people as surrogates, Latina, uh, South Asian, who were often classified as breeders. Now I'm black and I'm used to hearing how people speak of women of color, but this was some Handmaid's Tale stuff. Okay, so now it's talking about race. She's getting into racism. She's getting into um, racializing the whole process, which is a very big temptation for a lot of people, especially Hollywood actresses and actors, to racialize everything and be woke and be leftist, liberal, um, you know, socialist, uh, intersectional, critical race theory, the whole nine yards, that's Hollywood. They're all bought into that hook, line, and sinker. So we're, we're getting some of that commentary now. We chose the most ethical agency we could find and answered most of their questions about prerequisites with we don't care. Religion, active lifestyle, diet. Two months later, in early December, we were presented with a surrogate who seemed to check all the boxes. We were introduced over the phone, but the conversation was made awkward by the fact that we couldn't reveal our identities to protect our anonymity of both parties. She said all the right things about how she experienced the gift of life having her own kids and wanted to give this gift to others, but I was cautious, wondering if people were prepared to say that. So, they are interviewing surrogate uh, woman, women and trying to figure out who they want to have to have their baby. <laughs> now, again, from a Christian perspective, I think we need to begin to think in terms of the sovereignty of God. And we need to think in terms of God knows all things and has a purpose in all things. And Romans 8, 28, God works all things together for good. So, if you and your spouse cannot have a child, then it's perfectly legit to look around for adoption. It's perfectly legit for you to try to go about uh, having children that way. But to take matters into your own hands, and that's what these different uh, technological methods seem to be, um, the first one that they tried was the IVF, in vitro fertilization. And, of course, that involves fertilizing a number of different eggs. Say there's a half a dozen eggs, or even say that there are a dozen eggs, 12, uh, 10 to 12 or so. Fertilized eggs, these are conceptions. And we believe as Christians that life begins at conception, and so you actually have a human being conceived in these fertilized eggs. And so you're just conceiving human life like crazy to get a whole pool of fertilized eggs from which you can choose one, the one that seems healthiest or the one that seems the sex that you want it to be or it seems whatever criteria you choose, you judge the different eggs and the doctor can tell you, okay, and then you choose that and then that's the one implanted in the woman. And if all goes well, that baby is born and you have your child. But again, playing God, it's taking life into your own hands. You've already conceived life with these, these fertilized eggs. And these other fertilized eggs, say there were 12 that were fertilized in this process and you used one then those 11 have to be stored in deep freeze for some future time or never used and simply discarded and destroyed and again you are taking god you're playing god with these 11 conceived humans because again life starts at conception and you are playing god in that you are creating life and then destroying life once you have the one out of 12 or however many you you fertilize then you play god and choose and pick and choose who lives and who dies and that's that's not right that's not christian and that does not fit 
into a biblical worldview. But now Dwayne Wade and his wife, Gabrielle Union, they have gone one step further because they tried to play God with in vitro fertilization. That didn't produce what they wanted. And so now they're going to go even further and they're going to take the seed of, they're going to take the seed of Dwayne Wade and they're going to, um, uh, now this is where I'm not quite sure what happens. Um, is it that they take one of the eggs of Gabriel Union and, and in vitro fertilize that egg and then implant it into the surrogate? Or is it that Dwayne Wade is uh, clinically and, and in, the, in the office um, uh, f- fertilizes the eggs of this surrogate? I don't quite understand that. That's one of the things that the article might bring out. Let's read a, read a little head. After she was cleared by Dr. Beck, she agreed to meet in person with, in her office. As I got dressed that morning, I realized that this was the best and worst blind date ever. Okay, so she talks about going there to meet the surrogate. And it says, I got there early. And, okay, the door opened like a blind date. You look everywhere at once, knowing who, who you're being, not knowing where you're looking at. And the first thing I noticed was a nose ring. Oh, I thought, she is cool white girl. A cool white girl. And then I noticed her notice me her eyebrows shot up oh oh ho oh. there was an excitement to her voice and I smiled this is such a trip I have your book on hold at four different libraries I have never been done wrong by readers I started laughing and we hugged so I guess now I can get a copy huh yeah I said meaning yes to everything her name was N- Natalia Natal- Natalie and when her husband came in, I saw they matched. Free spirits with an aura of goodness to them. They had an easy rapport and were affectionate with each other. And I hadn't known that they would be so important to me, knowing that I, that she had partnered in this. I called D and put him on the speaker and they directed their attention to the phone. I looked up at them and you're those people, I thought. You really want to help others. Okay, so the due date was Thanksgiving. They picked out a name. Um, let's see. So it looks like if this is a white surrogate, it looks like that they take Gabriel Union's egg and then Dwayne Wade's sperm and they do that um in vitro fertilize fertilize it and then put it into the surrogate that's what it's looking like here it doesn't expel that out right here but that's what it looks like Um, and then it says later it goes on and on and talks about that Um, it says uh, when she looked at the ultrasound of her baby Um, it's that it was suddenly incredible Dwayne took my hand there was so much happiness in his face I lost it my cry was a choke and stopped in my throat tears streaming down it was grief I had so many miscarriages I say the following with caveat I'm steadfast in being pro-choice I was on a fertility journey at 44 the smallest cell was weighed waited with the expectation of life a zygote was a baby just a potential alone when one of my eggs was examined that was a baby when Dwayne got a sperm analysis that was a baby every swimmer was our baby and when I miscarried in the first trimester I never thought I had lost a baby baby I had never let it count looking at the screen I understood how many potential babies I had lost that was why I was crying. A flood great, floodgate of grief and sorrow overcame me, threatened to drown me. Okay, so she's becoming 
in that sort of instant more pro-life because she's realizing that um, what she had lost before was actually life. And uh, that awakened her to actually becoming more uh, Christian or pro-life. So then it goes on and it talks about that. So yeah, that's what happened. They in vitro fertilized, it looks like, and then they implanted the uh, fertilized egg into this woman who is the surrogate. And the surrogate is simply a womb that carries the baby. But the question is, is that ethical and proper? And I think from a Christian viewpoint, um, you're, you're pressing, you're trying to get your will over God's will. Now, some people might say, well, what about Abraham? Didn't Abraham, in a sense, use a surrogate like Hagar and had Ishmael through Hagar uh, because Sarah couldn't bear him a child? Uh, yes, that's exactly true, but that was not the right thing to do. That was Abraham imposing his will and trying to get his way and trying to get him a child. But as it turned out, God actually gave him the child of promise, Isaac. Um, and so his venture into trying to play God and trying to conceive through Hagar and bearing Ishmael, Ishmael, Ishmael was not the child of promise. And that was more of out of the flesh. That was more out of the worldly thinking, not out of faith. And so you can't use the example of Abraham to justify something like a surrogacy. If a couple attempts to get pregnant and they just can't conceive or they, they have miscarriages and it doesn't work out, uh, might they not conclude that hey, God is trying to do something else in our life. So why are we fighting him? Why don't we just let God be God and not try to go through this in vitro fertilization route that actually takes the life of children, uh, conceived children, or the surrogacy route? So we can see that uh, this couple, we understand what why they're trying to do this. They want to conceive of children and have children in their life. But the problem is they're going about it uh, through the flesh. And um, just like Abraham, he said, well, I want children, so I guess I have to go through Hagar, the maidservant, and she can give me a child. Well, no, that was not God's plan. God wanted him to wait and have the child of promise, Isaac, through his own wife, through the natural childbirth. And if he had waited... Um, there wouldn't have been that uh, conflict then after uh, the birth of Isaac with, with uh, Ishmael and Isaac. So we need to go with God. We need to trust God and not rush ahead and try to play God and just be content to accept what God has for us in life and not presume that we know what's best for us. We need to trust God and not rush ahead and try to make things happen on our own. Well, I hope that's been a helpful commentary. We'll see you back next week. God bless.